This is Jen Judkins with Teaching Forward. This tutorial video covers Padlet, a blank wall for posting and sharing. In this video, we'll take a look at what Padlet is and some reasons why you might want to use it in your classroom, as well as the teacher viewpoint for creating and customizing a Padlet wall, and see how students can post on a Padlet wall without the need to log in. Let's get started. To get started, access Padlet by going to padlet.com. You can log in with your Google account. Teacher accounts are free and students don't require an account. Once you arrive at Padlet, you'll see that there's an option to create a new Padlet wall. Any previously created Padlets will appear on the menu on the left under Padlets. To create a new wall, I'm just clicking New Wall. This link at the top is what I can provide to students right away and this will allow them to access and participate by adding posts onto this blank Padlet wall. If you wanted, you could finish right here and just share this blank Padlet wall with students to participate. We're going to take a look, though, at some of the features that allow you to customize your Padlet wall. To access those features, click on the gear icon on the bottom right, and this allows you to provide an icon for your Padlet wall, as well as a title and description. Once you've added your title and description, it will appear up at the top and you can switch your wallpaper next. The wallpaper is the background that is behind your Padlet wall. There are a, a number of different choices that you can choose from in the selections here or you can upload your own. You can create your own using uh, Google Drawing, for example, and your own Padlet background may be useful if you wanted kids, for example, I want them to agree or disagree. So I'm going to pull in a background that I chose that has two colors, so they'll put their selection on one side or the other. You can change the layout as well. Uh, the default layout is freeform, which means that wherever the kids click on the wall, that's where their post will land. This allows them to move their post around wherever they want. It can cause a little bit of confusion the first time kids use Padlet, though, because posts can fall on top of one another, covering uh, each other's posts up. I recommend when you first start using Padlet that you start with the grid layout so that um, the Padlet uh, posts will appear in a grid fashion, but they won't fall on top of one another. In this example, I'm going to use Freeform, though, because I've created an example where I want students to post on one side or the other. Let's now look at privacy. Your Padlet wall by default will be a hidden link, meaning it's not searchable by a Google search, but anyone who has the link can write on the Padlet wall. This is something you may want to change to can view later once your students are finished creating the, their posts on the Padlet wall so that they don't post any changes or additions after class is over. You can create a custom address. The address that's available at the top of the screen does work and is available to students immediately. Um, you could, if you wanted to, um, make a custom URL. And as long as it hasn't been chosen before, it's going to be available for you. So you can put in the custom URL. This is an example of one. And that could easily be written on the board for your students to type in directly. Copy is a choice that you may want to use if you're trying to do a similar Padlet wall for multiple classes. You can copy the wall without the post so that you have all of the same background and title and templates that are available in your first wall uh, through additional classes. This is basically the choices you have for your Padlet wall. So if I just click away from the choices, you'll see that I'm back to the wall itself. Clicking on the wall anywhere will cause me to have a new post. Uh, this is how students will interact with the wall. When they arrive, they click anywhere and they will begin typing. You can have the title be anything you want. So for example, in this case, I'm going to have the students use their name and type their response. I'll have them drag their response to the side that matches, so agrees will be on the left. And then I'll have them type in a reason for their choice. 
in addition to having a title and a description, students can uh, add an attachment or a photo or a link. So if you click this image across the bottom here, you'll be able to see that students can access a choice. So I'm going to put a link which goes to a picture. And you'll see how that picture now is added. I could do the same thing by adding a link to another page, or um, I could even have students type up a response uh, paragraph or so, and then they could add a link to their Google document, for example, and share with the whole class that way. Thanks for watching. Check us out online at teachingforward.net for this and other ways to use technology effectively in your classroom.